Okay, so we're diving into Begonia today, this sci-fi movie that has everyone talking. I've definitely seen you clicking on those pre-release articles. And trust me, the hype is real. Yeah, what's got people buzzing is the talent behind it. Mm -hmm. um, you've got, we're talking Oscar-nominated director, Emmy-winning writer. Right, like give me some names. Who are we talking about here? What makes this team so special? So the director, right, it's Yorgos Lanthimos. He did the favorite dog tooth, you know. The killing of a sacred deer, right. I mean, talk about a movie that stays with you. Intense, yeah. exactly. And the writer's Will Tracy. He's worked on things like Succession mm -hmm. and The Menu. So sharp dialogue, some social commentary, you know, the guy's got range. Put those two together. It's going to be interesting, to say the least. Okay, I'm intrigued, but what's the actual plot of Begonia? What's the story? All right, so picture this. Two guys, super into conspiracy theories, right? They get it in their heads that this powerful CEO, she's actually an alien. Whoa, hold on. An alien CEO? Like, what? Is she running some intergalactic corporation? What's going on here? Well, details are still kind of hush-hush, but... Here's the thing. It's actually a remake of this South Korean film from 2003, Save the Green Planet. Oh, wow. I've heard of that. And it's, wait, isn't that a comedy? What does that mean for Begonia? Are we getting laughs with our alien invasion? <laughs> it's the big question, right? I mean, is Lanthimos leaning into that comedic side? Or is it going to be darker, more psychological? Knowing him, it could be both. Yeah, my bet's on a total mind bend. And speaking of mind bending, Emma Stone and Jesse Plemons are attached to this. Like, come on, that's got to be some kind of cinematic destiny. Oh, absolutely. And and it's not just a one off pairing either. This is going to be Stone's fourth time working with Lanthimos. Wow. Four films. They've done the favorite poor things. And even that short film, what was it called? Bleat? Bleat. Yeah. They've clearly got a good thing going, creatively speaking. For sure. But there's always something, I don't know, different about their collaborations, you know? What is it about this director-actor duo that makes their work so, I don't know, captivating, even when it gets weird? It's like they're always pushing boundaries. Mm -hmm. Performance, storytelling, everything. You might not always like it, but you're definitely gonna remember it. And they've got awards to prove it. But awards aside, I'm really curious to see how Stone takes on a role in a genre-bending film like this. Totally. And let's not forget about Jesse Plemons. He's no stranger to Lanthimos's world either, after the killing of a sacred deer. Right. It's like he's become this go-to guy for these dark, complex roles. Exactly. He just slips between genres so effortlessly. And the thing is, he always delivers, always gives this nuanced, amazing performance. It's true. He's got that something special. Wait, hold on. Did I hear right? Is Alicia Silverstone in this, too? You heard right. Alicia Silverstone is officially part of the Bugonia universe. Whoa, Cher from Coolis is teaming up with the guy who made the lobster. <laughs> this is getting wilder by the second. Uh, what do you make of this casting, though? It's not exactly what you'd expect. It's definitely left field. You're right. But remember, Silverstone's actually worked with Lanthimos before, just very briefly, in The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Oh, right. She was Martin's mom, the one in that intense scene with Colin Farrell. Exactly. And even though it was a small part, she made an impact. <laughs> she did, she did. Which I think says a lot about Lanthimos as a director. He can get these amazing, memorable performances, even from actors in tiny roles. Yeah. So the fact that he cast Silverstone again, even if it's not a lead, mm. it makes you think, right, there's something about her that fits his vision. He sees something, that's for sure. And he's not afraid to, like, cast against type. Which, knowing this film probably means something. But anyway, before we go too far down the rabbit hole of casting speculation, we were talking about Silverstone's character. We know she's in it, but do we know who she's playing? That's the million dollar question, right? The studio's keeping quiet about her role, which, let's be honest, just makes it even more intriguing. We're left to connect the dots. What kind of character would Lantimos give to Silverstone? Someone known for, well, not exactly this kind of film. Right, like we haven't seen her in a role this what's been unconventional in a while. Oh. So lay it on me, what clues do we have? We've got the super talented actress, she can do comedy, she can do drama, so what's uh, she gonna be like in Bulgonia? Exactly, it's wide open. And then you think about Save the Green Planet, the original, right? Comedy, violence, social commentary, it's all there. So will Silverstone be in the corporate world with our maybe alien CEO? Or will she be with the conspiracy guys trying to find the truth? Or maybe, okay, just hear me out. What if she's the one in charge of everything? Like she's the mastermind behind the whole alien thing. Whoa, I like the way you think. That would be such a Lancimos move, flipping everything on its head. And imagine what Silverstone could do with a character like that, playing both sides. Is she using everyone? Does she actually believe it? 
Is she just totally misunderstood? See, this is why I love these deep dives. It's not just about the movie. It's like we're dissecting it before it even exists. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We've got a release date that feels years away, November 2025. Years, you say? Yeah. Time's just a concept, especially when a movie like this is on the horizon. But yeah, it's a wait. Which means we have that much more time to go crazy over every single detail, right? Every casting announcement, every weird tweet from the director, yeah. every blurry set photo. Pretty much. And Bugonia is like a designed to make people obsess. I mean, we haven't even gotten into the effects, the music, the look of the film. Oh, don't even get me started. Will it be that classic Lanthimos style, very raw and real? Or will he go all out with the alien stuff, make it super visual? Those are the questions that keep me up at night, seriously. But going back to what you were saying about Silverstone, her character in the original movie, there's this really interesting thing to consider. Save the Green Planet? can get pretty intense, like body horror, psychological stuff. Yeah, you're really digging into the source material now. I'm here for it. How does that connect back to Silverstone and Begonia, though? Think about it. If Lanthimos is drawing from those darker parts of the original, Silverstone's character could be the way to bring that into Begonia. She could be the one who embodies those themes. Okay, now that is an interesting thought. But you're right. It'd be naive to think that Begonia is going to be all sunshine and rainbows, just because there were some funny parts in the original. We're talking about Yorgos Lanthimos here. He knows how to get under your skin. Exactly. And when you think about his other movies, how they look so amazing but also mess with your head, Bugonia could be his biggest, most ambitious film yet. Which brings us right back to that big question. What is Bugonia actually about? Is he trying to say something about corporations, about conspiracy theories, about what's real and what's not? If I had to guess... It's all of that, and then some. Lanthimos doesn't like to make things easy. He's going to make us work for it, make us question things, and those questions, they'll stick with us after the movie's over. You know what? That's exactly what I want from a movie. Something that stays with you, that you want to talk about, that maybe even changes how you see things. Couldn't agree more. Bugonia has the potential to be huge, and I am so ready. It's like we're all standing at the edge of this rabbit hole he's created, just waiting for him to give us a push and see what's down there. Right. But, I mean... It's November 2025. That's so far away. So until then, all we can do is keep putting the pieces together. It's part of the fun, though, right? Trying to figure it out. Absolutely. And, and with Bugonia, I feel like there's more than one puzzle to solve. Yeah. You've got the original film, Save the Green Planet, which is already all over the place, tonally, thematically. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got Lanthimos and his style, which is its own thing. And then you add in this cast, they're all bringing something different. It's almost overwhelming, you know? Almost. But that's what makes it so interesting because when a film has this much going on, it makes you think it sparks conversations that go way beyond just the movie itself. Totally. Suddenly you're not just talking about like aliens and CEOs. It's about power and what people are afraid of and what's uh -huh. a true big stuff. Exactly. It's like Lanthimos is using this genre film, sci-fi, to sneak in these big ideas about like who we are, you know, how we see things. It's true. And I think that's what makes Bugonia more than just a genre film, really. It makes you think mm -hmm. it'll stay with you, maybe even make you question everything. So for everyone listening who's, let's be real, already counting down the days until this movie comes out, what should they be thinking about? What's the big takeaway here? I'd say go into it ready for anything. Begonia is not going to be something you can just sit back and watch. you got to uh -huh. pay attention. Think for yourself. Don't be afraid to be a little bit disturbed. Exactly. And embrace the fact that you might not have all the answers when it's over. Because sometimes the best stories leave you with more questions than answers. Right. right. So here's something else to think about. What if this movie isn't just about an alien CEO? What if it's about how much we want to believe in something, even if it means ignoring what's real? Something to think about. But for now, we're going to have to leave it there. Keep asking questions, and we'll see you next time for another Deep Dive.